I really want to have Wendy share something that I think is really interesting and really important. And um, this is something that Wendy has done a ton of research on. And this is on uh, the idea of can you be a man's type or, you know, a man's type and what goes on around that. And so Wendy has shared with me and maybe with some of you before a really funny story about this. So maybe, Wendy, you can start there and we can talk about this a little bit. The first date I had had after a long-term marriage and he, I was nearly divorced, he was nearly divorced, and his ex-wife was about 95 pounds and she had a short brown hair, pixie, brown, brown eyes, Italian, and I was about, at the time, like 250 pounds, red hair, green eyes, like we couldn't have been any different if we tried. I mean, the only way we could have been different was a different race, right? right. But he swears to this day. We're still friends all these years later. He swears we are the same type. Is that like us, they have many types, right? I could give you five or six men who would be my type and they don't look anything alike. Uh, and I'm sure you too, if you think of actors or, or famous people that are interesting to you, they probably aren't like maybe your husband or your boyfriend or the guys you've dated in the past. So they have different types, but also it is, it's, hugely vast and it's in our essence it's it's in that moment when they're with you so a man is standing in front of you and he's seeing you face to face you are or you're not oh what yes it's such great news you are or you're not so one of the things that we always do is we we get a date and we like the date and we hope he likes us and he asks us out again and we run home and we plan the second date and we try and become more attractive. And then we go buy products and new clothing and figure out what else to wear and what to look better in to be more attractive. You don't have to do that. <gasps> you are or you're not. I mean, don't show up, you know, in your sweats or anything, but put it together as best you can. But we don't have to work so hard anymore. We don't have to buy the shiny hair products and all the things and the pheromones with the perfume and the deal to have him be flipped to liking you more. They do or they don't. And one man I was interviewing, I said, so what's your type? And he said, well, I have many types, but I grew up, uh, the, my, I hit puberty in Florida right at the end of the hippie era. So long, straight hair, natural, flip-flop, hippie girl. And I said, what you doing with me? And he said, there's enough of her in you. Now, I don't see that, but he could see that. So we want to, like the eye, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so is attraction. And so is their type. So just because he says Cameron Diaz and you don't look like her, or just because he says hippie chick and you don't look like that, you don't get to judge. I still don't think I look anything like the teeny tiny Italian lady. <laughs> But we don't get to judge. It's right there for them. And it's all of the senses. It's our personality. It's the way we move. It's, we worry that it's the shape. You know, we'll look at his ex-girlfriend and go, oh, she's long, lean, and blonde, and I'm curvy, petite, brunette. So that's not going to work out. It's not like that for them at all. So you don't want to try and guess it, and you don't want to try and guess it by stereotyping. Because that's we have these archetypes of the buxom redhead or the curvaceous, you know, athletic brunette or the groovy Peruvian. Or you know, we have these ideas of what type is, and it just isn't that. It's very personal. It's moment by moment. It's every single bit of our essence. And some men do have a preference of shape, but it's uh, that's more rare. That is more the exception. And especially as men get older. That, that tends to go away. So when they're 20, when they're in their breeding years from a biological standpoint, hourglass figure, that, that indicates she's not pregnant, go hunt that, right? <laughs> so from a biological standpoint, that makes sense. But when they're 40s, 50s, 60s, are you in here? Are you moving in here? Are, are you at home in your home? That's what they're looking for. The, the shape part doesn't matter as much. 
And if you're with a guy who says, I really like you, I think you're great. I like everything about you, but you know, you could lose a little and you could, you know, you could, he's not your guy. He's not Mm -hmm. your guy. Mm -hmm. Because one thing I learned out of 121 first dates and decades of understanding type is you really want to be his. You really do. Because as you age and as you gain a little more or a lot more or lose a little more or a lot more, he still likes your body. And if you can live in a world where your man loves your body, how it is, aging and all, it's heaven on earth. Mm-hmm. So I want to leave you with that. Yeah, yeah. I really, I really, really appreciate this. I think this is such an important piece for women to understand. And thank you, Wendy, for doing all that research for five years to provide us with that. And I will say one thing that's really important is this can be different for women, meaning that a man usually knows, like you said, right away if you're his type, even if you don't think that you're his type based on who he was with in the past, if you know who he was with in the past. But for women, sometimes we can develop an attraction to men that we're not initially attracted to. And this is a big distinction. But I asked a couple of men, and I've asked men before on previous man panels about this, and they said that doesn't usually happen for men. No. It doesn't happen. Um, They're either attracted or they're not. And it's actually good news because we don't have to, uh, if we know we're not their type, or we know we are their type, we don't have to continue to prove ourselves to be their type, or we don't have to try to flip them. And I know you have something to say about flipping them, but we can touch on that in a minute. But for women, okay, yes, if you go out with a man and he makes your skin crawl on the first date, you're probably not going to develop attraction for him. If the two of you were the only people on a desert island and nothing was ever going to happen, you're probably not going to develop attraction to him. And so if you absolutely know that's not happening, you don't need to continue to explore that or go on other, other dates. However, if you sense, you know what, there, there could be maybe a little something about this guy or he doesn't necessarily flip your switch like, wow, when you first meet him, but he's really showing up in a nice way or there are things you like or appreciate about him you may want to consider giving it the second or third date because in those kinds of cases, sometimes that attraction does develop. I know I've had clients and I'm sure you've had clients with me that this has happened with where initially they're not attracted at all, but they get to know this man and the way he's showing up, the way he makes her feel, she enjoys being with him. She finds that he's someone that maybe she admires and respects and there's a lot to love about him, she starts to find him increasingly more attractive. But what we're telling you here is that's possible sometimes for women, not usually possible for men. Correct. Now, there's a, there's a, there's a nuance here, Wendy, and I want you to touch on this about flipping them. <laughs> because I know we've talked about this, and it is possible to flip them, but tell us what goes on there. <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing. You can flip them, and I know I have flipped I have flipped many of them. It's completely possible. I'm very tart like. You must know this about me to to know and love me to know I'm tart like. <laughs> so, I have flipped many a men. Men who I was not their type, but I wanted them. I had to have them. You know that. You've had that experience where you had to have him. I had <laughs> to have him. So I flipped him. And how you flip them? If you want to know the secret is you just put out all that sexual energy. You know this. You've already had to do this yourself. You put out all this sexual energy, just woo, woo, and you flirt, and you put out all the sexiness juice you have, and you try and do everything, including whip out stories to be funny and, and, and sucking it in and doing all the things. And if you pour a ton of sexual energy out, you might be able to flip them, and then you can sleep with them. <laughs> <laughs> But you never feel beautiful or wanted or desired because you made it happen, because you had to have them, because your chemistry was so high that you didn't care. You just didn't care. And I know that not all women do that. Only only my tart-like sisters and I do that. <laughs> but um, 
yeah, you can flip a guy to becoming, uh, you can flip a guy to want to have sex with you, but you're not going to flip him to become his type. And so he's, he'll, he'll be willing to have sex with you, but you're still not going to be his type. And it just doesn't feel very good. And if you ever had that experience of dating a lot of people and you look back at your history, you can tell by how you felt if you were his type or not. By you ever feel beautiful and wanted and desired? Or did you just have to keep working at it all the time, all the time, all the time? And it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And it's also, I think, a source of a lot of pain, ultimately, because you're going to feel insecure. If you do gain those pounds, you know, he may not be attracted to you no matter how much uh, sexual energy you're putting out there. And uh, it's, it's going to take a lot for you to try to keep up that over a period of time and probably not give you a very good chance of a relationship really going the distance because one or the other of you is going to become disenchanted with the whole experience. And so really not a good idea, really not a good idea. If you're wanting a long-term committed relationship, it's not going to work. And yeah, you want someone that's going to love you and think you're all that in a bag of chips and be, feel beautiful with, even if you gain those 10, 20 pounds or whatever it might happen, or as you age, because we're all aging. Um, like it or not. <laughs> we all are. Right? Yeah. And uh, I think that it's also worth saying before we just move off of this one, Wendy, is that men don't see us in terms of our beauty from the same critical eye. Men that consider us their type, they don't see us from the same critical eye that we often see ourselves. They don't necessarily look at us and say, oh, my word, she's got a little belly going. You know, they, they just look at you and see you as beautiful. You, I know you want to add something to this. I can feel it. <laughs> They're called love handles. They really are. <laughs> They're not called hate handles. Yeah. One of the most heartbreaking realizations after doing so much studying of men of this topic was I can't give every woman the knowledge I have about the vast difference between what happens in here and what happens with a man. You know, we'll nitpick and know that the relationship is not going to turn out because we're not attractive over five pounds. Men could go another 50. I have a very good friend who was married for 20 years and when she, and the whole time she told her husband she was fat, right? And when they divorced and he remarried, he remarried somebody about 50 pounds heavier than her. And that it would have been, you know, she was hitting herself in the head that she, she wrecked, she wrecked any connection and intimacy and love and understanding his appreciation of her beauty because of her inner critic. You know, our inner critics will drive us nuts our inner critics will compel us to say things about our weight or our age or how this isn't looking anymore or how our bodies have betrayed us. And men are sad for us. They, they know that, that there's a crazy lady feeding bad information in there and, and he doesn't know how to change our mind about that and we can rarely hear it. So if I could give you one gift, it would be to look at your beauty through a man's eyes instead of through your inner critic's eyes, because they have so much more space for our humanity than we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and please, ladies, don't point out your flaws. <laughs> don't bring up your flaws to a man. If you're with a man who loves you and thinks you're beautiful, you don't need to be pointing out a new wrinkle or a new five pounds or a new whatever, you know, or a gray hair or whatever may be going on for you that's making you feel like your inner critic is coming forward. Please don't point that out to a man because chances are he's not even going to see it. If he sees you as beautiful, that's such a gift. And just enjoy that and bask in that and allow that to be. Um, you know, I feel like I know something really personally about this because as, as most of you know, I'm a breast cancer survivor and, uh, in 2012, I was diagnosed with a, a 
fairly advanced stage of breast cancer, which required me to do the whole shebang. Had a double mastectomy, lost all my hair, went through radiation, had to go through all kinds of things to survive. And I'm a grateful survivor. But to say that I didn't feel very attractive would be an understatement. Oh, they also removed my ovaries and everything as part of the treatment. So I was losing everything in terms of my physical body that made me feel feminine. I mean, I was like going, what? I feel like, I feel like I'm losing not just potentially my life, but I felt like I was losing all of my femininity. Mm -hmm. But my husband would kiss my bald head and tell me how beautiful I was going through all of this. And what I got from that was that he saw me not just for my physical body, not just for all that I could accomplish or all that I could do or things that I thought were impressive about me. He saw the essence of me. He saw my soul. He still saw me as a beautiful feminine woman. Now, I know some of you who are single were saying, well, yeah, I already loved you, which is true. But I'm just giving you this as an example as to how much a man can really care for a woman and how he can see her beauty through things that seem like almost impossible. Um, and that was really touching to me. That really meant so much to me that I, I got that he loved me in such a way that he, he saw me as beautiful even in the midst of all of that. That was an amazing experience. A great gift. That was beautiful.